Hopkins with Tableau Software. I um, just want to thank you all for joining in our Google Hangout chat with some really talented sports data visualization bloggers. Um, they were really helpful uh, in writing guest posts for us this month as part of our Sports Viz Month theme. Um, it's an exciting month for me. I really had a lot of fun because, as you uh, may or may not know, um, sports is a passion of mine, and that's how I got started. Uh, I started visualizing sports data as a way to take some of the, uh, the data analytics skills that I had learned in my day job and apply them to things that I was passionate about and interested in. So sports is great. There's lots of data. It's a very data-rich environment, and so a lot of that is publicly available, and so you can really uh, make some interesting visualizations and tell some great stories about sports data. Um, in this case, you know, uh, with the folks here on the call using Tableau Public. Um, so with that, I'm going to let each of the uh, participants here introduce themselves. So they're just going to let you know who they are and, um, and also where they, uh, where they visualize and publish their visualizations about sports data and just what it is that makes them uh, passionate about uh, sports and data in general. Uh, and then after that, we're going to get to some Q&A. So we have a couple questions ready to go, and I can see that a number of you are submitting questions already uh, via the Q&A panel, which is great. So definitely submit questions, and uh, feel free to also, I think you can vote up um, or plus one some of the questions so we know which ones that have already been submitted you're most interested in hearing the answers to. Okay, so with that, let's kick it off here. So Carl Alchin is going to be the first person to introduce himself. So take it away, Carl. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Carl Alchin. I'm currently sitting in London. Uh, so nice in the evening, so apologies if the brain's a bit slow, but hey, there we go. Um, I basically have data visualization as part of my day job, which is really frickin' sweet. But um, more importantly, I get to come home at night and do some sports visiting, because like Ben, it's a complete passion and a way to just kind of share some of that stuff and dig around the sport that I really enjoy. Hence the Spurs t-shirt, no apologies for that, it's, it's there, it's one intentionally. Um, I publish most of my stuff on datajedininja.blogspot.com um, and I do a range of things. I, I work for a bank, I can hear the boos now, um, <laughs> but for, a, for me to have a chance to kind of share some techniques and just kind of explore some subjects with other people, that I can only really do that through sports biz. Um, so yeah, uh, you'll often see stuff about the Spurs up there or other NBA related things. Awesome. All right, Carl. And how about Jewel? You introduce, introduce yourself as well? Uh, sure. Um, I am kind of a weird person to be on here because I don't really do sports very much. I made a, I made a little sports viz about the one sport that I participated in, sport, using it loosely, which is marching band. Um, <laughs> I, I was actually really excited about the sports data viz uh, contest that we just recently were, ran. And congrats again to John Mathis, who won, and to all of our awesome people who participated in that. And I was happy to see that some other people put some alternative sports in there, like Paul Benoob's cup stacking one was really awesome. Um, but I'm really just here so that I can provide the little uh, break music whenever we switch people like this. <laughs> so that's our Sports Center top 10. Thank you, Jewel. And <laughs> it's great to have a band geek. I mean, every sport, right, needs those band geeks to just <laughs> make that make that moment come alive. So awesome, Jewel. Uh, how about Mac, our, our attendee from Down Under? Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I'm Mac. I do work for Tableau down here in Sydney in Australia. So I'm probably the one waking up this morning. And I just made, just texted someone upstairs to bring my Vuvuzela down, so you know, maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll get that going a little bit later on. Um, well, I obviously, I, I initially, originally I come from Europe, so that's why football's in my blood, really. Uh, but I really didn't think about um, writing a blog or, or creating football visualizations uh, for, you know, many years ago. But last year, um, I was doing something for Tableau. It was actually a, 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 a conference, and I needed a data set. So I thought, what do I know? What do I like? You know, what can I talk about? So I threw up a, a football viz in front of an audience of 350 people, showing off Tableau 8, in fact. Uh, and then people started asking about it, saying, well, when can we get hold of it? I said, well, better clean this up and put it up somewhere. So that's where it all started. And then... Now you can kind of judge my time, how busy I am. If I'm not blogging every month, then obviously I have no time alive outside of work, it seems. 
Um, but so most of the stuff is on icdata.com, which comes from IC dead people, I suppose, you know, <laughs> in some way. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's it's been only a few months, but uh, it's, it's good fun when you're talking about something you're passionate about. Awesome. Yeah, I see data says I E Y E S E E data. Com, yes, right. I as your eye can mm -hmm. see data, yes. As in people can see dead people, that kind of concept, yes. Okay, good. So we will not look up on the org chart who your boss is, because then the more you blog, the more you're probably going to get <laughs> more assignments. So... Well, they still, they're still asleep in Singapore. <laughs> well, Mac had an awesome biz where he actually published a screenshot of football transfers, soccer transfers, I think probably the past 100 years or so. Um, and it got picked up by some TV shows, which was really cool. So. Um, so nice to see that. So thanks, Mac, and especially for getting up nice and early and, uh, and joining. Got your cup of coffee, so we're glad about that. Um, and we're going to, there it is. All right, great. So we're going to switch it over now to Rob Tufts. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Rob? Yeah, um, my name is Rob Tufts. I'm here in Washington, D.C., and uh, I live in the Annapolis area, but I actually write about St. Louis Blues hockey, uh, originally from the St. Louis area. I've uh, been using Tableau for about uh, three, maybe four years now, I think, and uh, got into sports visualization because I entered uh, the, you know, my first uh, Tableau contest, uh, um, and I just went with what I knew, which was hockey data. So, And from there, it, was, uh, it opened up a whole new world for me because there's uh, the interesting aspect of hockey data is that there's really two worlds to it. There's... Um, kind of what's the traditional stats that's put out by the NHL, but now there's these what's called advanced stats, though people don't like to call them that, but it's a different way, it's a more robust way of looking at hockey performance, um, both at the team and player level. And so I write for the St. Louis Blues site on SB Nation. It's called St. Louis Game Time, and I do uh, data viz, data analysis of hockey teams, hockey players, St. Louis Blues, try to tell the story about the St. Louis Blues through data visualization. So, Very cool. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, Rob, didn't you win that first contest you entered and it was like a evil viz or something like that, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, that was the second contest I entered. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. I did win, yes, I am the winner of the evil viz competition with my <laughs> uh, Dr. Sinister's data viz o doom, I believe is what it was I'm looking called. at it right now. In fact, let me, just for the fun of it, let me see if I can present. Let's see if I can pull this off here. So this was... Okay, let me start screen share. So this is a, a test of the emergency broadcast system. Hopefully you can all see Dr. Sinister's data visual o doom. Okay, I'm making thumbs up by some other people here. So so this was uh, the doomsday device, evil monkeys, killer robots, a ray gun. So off topic here, this is definitely not sports related, but you can see how, how multi-talented uh, Rob is here, that he doesn't just visualize sports data, but also uh, evil data, as it, as it were. So. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Rob. And I guess, I know, being a Canadian that I am, I'll love to, to read. Not a Blues fan, um, especially because they took Wayne Gretzky from my LA Kings. However, <laughs> however, I uh, definitely appreciate all that you do uh, to put forward the world of hockey and data. So now we're going to move on to uh, Ryan Sleeper. So Ryan Sleeper, Iron Biz champ of 2013. Uh, and let me introduce him no further, and I'll let him take it from here. Hey, guys. Ryan Sleeper. Um, Coming from the heart of America, Prairie Village, Kansas. I'm about a 15-minute drive outside of Kansas City, Missouri. So happy opening day, everybody, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, I run the site awesomeguy.com. That's osmguy.com. And really, that's just become a sandbox for my Tableau practice. I do that in my day job also at Evolytics. We're an analytics consultancy. But... My Tableau public visits have really allowed me to practice some techniques that I might not necessarily use at work. And really, it's become kind of an extension of my own entertainment. You know, I've, I've come from a small baseball market, and we don't always have a great chance of making the playoffs. So I've kind of done some of these analyses to keep me entertained throughout the season. Cool. Now, you had, I know you had the Chiefs going there. You guys had a good winning streak. So football-wise, you, uh, you were loving it for a while, right, this uh, re past regular season? <clears throat> Yeah, it was a lot of fun, but they're not uh, too much better. We have, The Chiefs haven't won a playoff game since 1993 either, so it's pretty rough over here. Well, speaking of uh, football, or at least American football, uh, we're going to switch now to talk to Tanya Casciarelli. So, Tanya, introduce yourself, please. Sure. So I am currently working full-time as a 
the director of analytics at a small data analytics company right in Boston, right near the garden, actually. So, of course, being uh, born and raised in this area, I'm a wicked Boston <laughs> fan. Uh, some of my posts might might show that, but I try to keep it somewhat neutral. Um, I've been working with Tableau for about two years, and it just, same with a lot of you guys, it was a curiosity thing, and uh, I remember the advanced NFL stats.com site released play-by-play -play data, and I thought, oh, wow, this is so cool. I could probably do, it was literally like Christmas morning for me, and I think it might have been Christmas Day when it was out, and I just started playing with it in Tableau, and I use R and a lot of other techniques to clean the data and process the data first, so it's just been a, yeah, a hobby, and you can see some of the stuff that I do for fun on uh, sportsdataviz.com. Which is an awesome URL, by the way. But uh, yeah, that was uh, those <laughs> the data gods in their way of uh, their way of blessing you that one day. I know that those sites are really cool. And in fact, um, when I was out in Boston, Tanya and I tag teamed on a presentation where she did some uh, data mining using R, and then uh, she handed it over to me, and I made a, a dashboard um, showing the pitching pitch statistics. Yeah, that's right. Pitch FX, right? Which is uh, pitch RX is the uh, the R add-in. Yes. And then I had a whole bunch of data that I uh, was given in my inbox, thanks to Tanya, and I ended up, I think, visualizing the pitching history, every single pitch in the major leagues of, I can't remember the pitcher for the Phillies, but in any case, it was a lot of fun. All right. So thanks, everyone, for introducing. And guys, um, if people out there listening uh, haven't gotten the idea, this is an awesome bunch, award-winning bunch. As you can see, they are fans and interested in a bunch of different sports. So... Uh, that should make the conversation a little interesting, but not just representing one or two sports, but pretty much any team sport, you name it, including marching band, which is also a team sport. Um, and I think we're going to start it off along those lines, right? So sports and data, I mean, it's a great combination. It's a great marriage. But I guess I would put to the, to the participants here, what is the best sport for data? And what I mean by that is what sport gives you the most opportunities and really is the <laughs> data-rich environment? Um, so I'll just throw that out there, and if anyone has a passionate idea about one or another sport, feel free to chime in. I can take this one. Go for it. Uh, so it depends on what you're doing, right? Uh, I think probably everyone here would agree that if you're looking into predictive modeling and, and statistics, obviously sabermetrics has been around for a long time, and baseball data is just so rich. Uh, there's it's much more of an individual sport where you can actually have some success predicting batter pitcher matchups, whereas with a sport like football, you've only got 16 data points, as in 16 games in a regular season, and there are just so many dynamics between the teams, the players, the coaching, um, just a lot of different variables. Whereas uh, if you're if you're going for just really straight up predictive modeling, I think baseball is the best. I think any sport, though, you can get a lot of interesting visualizations out of it. just really depends on the question you're asking. Mm -hmm. And I would say baseball, definitely, just to, to respond to that, I mean, you know, there's no doubt that baseball has the most rich history in terms of data um, and statistics tracking all the way back to the 1800s in some cases, um, which is really remarkable to think about. You can go to a website and find data from baseball games in 1880, right? It, it literally is out there. Um, yeah. So that's that's a history that they're they're uh, ahead of the game. They definitely had a head start coming into the era, dare I say it, of big data. Um, yeah, they were, that's part of their culture. It was part of the, the whole baseball tradition and culture. So, what do you all think about that? Does everybody want uh, to to maybe take an alternate point of view, or does everybody agree? I, I would uh, oh, go on, Rob. Oh, I was just going to say I I. When thinking about this question, it was definitely kind of baseball and in large part because of the longevity of data that they have, that you can go back and see how Babe, Babe Ruth, you know, performed and be able to compare that against, you know, current day players, right, yeah, with all the kind of money ball stats that were developed. Um, you know, I think what's interesting now, though, is that, for instance, the NBA is starting to invest in these, uh, I think it's called New View or Sports View cameras, something along those lines, that are going to provide even more kind of data for their games as far as X, Y coordinates and things like that. So um, it seems to me that the NBA might be kind of the next big data area 
um, for people who want to do visualizations as long as that XY data from the from the cameras and things of that nature are going to be available for people to use. Yeah, I, I was going to say Sports View and NBA for me comes next. The Sports View cameras that sit on top of the stadium roofs and basically monitor the player location all the way around the court and how they actually move as a team. So you're getting defensive strategies now that look at the movement of the five players um, on defense and how they respond to the offensive players and the threats. Like That technology is also being used in, in football and in the Premier League now. Um, but because basketball is still that element more constrained of the five players versus the 11, I think it makes it a lot easier to do the basketball stuff, just in the same way it was almost easier to do the baseball pieces of an individual player. Um, it's a bit much more of an individual sport. Basketball's kind of got that more, that stronger team element and stronger interaction. But I think kind of certainly the money that's around and starting to form around the Premier League now, that's going to start flowing through to the analytics quite soon. Yeah, if I could just add a few things as well. Uh, I mean, baseball and I suppose cricket is, is a similar game as well where, where are two players against each other and you can monitor that quite quite well. But games like football um, and the few challenges around collecting data, um, FIFA, for example, won't let you wear any transponders in the game or something that would identify you and we could track a player on the field, uh, so you've got to use the cameras which are, which are quite expensive to set up. Uh, and football is also a game, because it's a team sport, it, it's actually a, a lot to do with players that are not near the ball. You want to monitor everyone on the field to see how the team is moving and looking for space and so on. So even you know companies like Opta, for example, they collect, and I don't know if you guys have ever seen the videos of how they actually do this, they've got people watching the game and and and, and uh, recording every single pass, every single move, and so on. But they still focus on the players uh, that have the ball. Uh, I think the next big revolution really going to be when we start monitoring all the other players and seeing how the team performs, you know, as one. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. Good. Good points. I mean, you know, especially with basketball too, right? You've got a number of different events for your 50 baskets every day, as uh, or every game, as compared to. Uh, there we go. There we have it. The soccer, the beautiful game there uh, with the Vuvuzela. But uh, they only have maybe one or two goals, right? Uh, that's very common. So, um, so not that a goal is the only trackable or uh, interesting event to look at. But I think that's to your point, right, Mac? That a lot of the times you're interested in a player moving off the ball and moving into space. That's hard to quantify, especially when you can't have cameras uh, trained on them and tracking them every movement. Well, hey, listen, guys, we have, you know, we're, I was going to do a couple more of my questions, but I'm going to step aside here because there are so many awesome questions that are coming in right now from the attendees, which is great. Um, this one is a really good one by, uh, actually, before we get to the one by Matt, I just wanted to clarify. I noticed there was one question about Carl's blog from Jesse Johnson. Carl, what was the name of your blog again? Um, some of the people couldn't hear. I'm sure it's the accent. Uh, it's, so it's Data <laughs> Jedi Ninja uh, dot blogspot. .co.uk or .com. I think they both work. So yeah, data <laughs> data.blogspot.co.uk. Awesome. Okay, good. So that that thank you there. So data uh, data ninja.blogspot.com. Uh, Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a Jedi or a ninja. He's he's one and the same. He's both. He's both. both. So um, next question here. It was a great one that came up about. Um, and actually, I think it, it cleared out here uh, early. But the question is, would love to hear best tips and tricks for cleaning and processing data for visualizations. So um, what do you all think? When you get a, a raw set of data, and thanks, uh, there it is at the top there. So this is from Matt Buher. So thank you, Matt, for submitting the question. Um, what are some tips that you go through to clean up a data set um, so that you can actually start visualizing what is in there? I can uh, jump in on this one because I also wanted to provide some closing thoughts on uh, the best sport to quantify, and this is somewhat related. Because uh, I think with baseball, for whatever reason, I think the collection of the data has kind of transcended for some reason. I mean, that's the only sport where you're going to see a guy in the stands actually keeping score. It's much more structured, and um, it's the easiest to quantify. And with that being said, it makes it a lot easier because there's a few guys out there, particularly in the sport of baseball, and I'd love to hear some other horses from the other attendees here, but 
particularly with baseball, there's a few guys out there that have really made this their labor of love, and they've provided it in a great format that's very structured. You know, there's a there's a database that, that exists out there where you can download everything in a Tableau-ready format. Um, and then from there, it's just a matter of QAing the joins and pulling in what you need is, is mainly what I have had to do. <clears throat> Cool. Well, let, me, yeah. let me maybe quickly jump in. Uh, well, I'm assuming a lot of people do this for for the love of it. Uh, so you probably don't go out, uh, you know, spending lots of money on ETL tools and, and so on. Obviously, there are commercial <clears throat> options there. But uh, I just dusted off my you know Python skills uh, and and use that. Um, th there are absolutely fantastic free libraries there. Python is a is a relatively easy language to learn. Uh, and you can pretty much uh, do anything with it. So, uh, you know, that, that's kind of my my tool of choice uh, for for cleaning things up in my own time. I'm going to yeah. go to the. Oh, sorry, Tanya. Go, go ahead, Carl. Go. Okay, I go to the opposite end of the spectrum. So, for the latest Viz, if you can see that on the screen, I actually went back to hand collection because. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford the sports view. I'd love some data if anyone's out there listening. Um, for the kind of X and Y coordinates of the player movement. So I decided to do some of that, sitting in the stand, hand tracking. Apart from doing that from London, basically means fast forwarding and rewinding. Uh, the NBA live subscription that I've got. So it's, um, yeah, that's how I got the data for the last one. And Max Wright it is sometimes for the love of it. So actually, that's something I wanted to explore. And I couldn't find the data out there, however many pages of Google I went through to find it. So it left me no choice but just to try and do it myself. So um, apart from that, it's a lot of time spent on Excel. Um, and I've also used Ultrix a fair bit where there are data sets out there, just to kind of actually transform a, a lot of data quickly um, when I do need to kind of clean something up or parse it out quickly and get it, get it across to something else. Carl, did you say you're in London? I am indeed, yes. How did you become a San Antonio Spurs fan? <laughs> oh, we're going into my own history here. Um, <laughs> so as a small fat kid, I went to America because my, my aunt and uncle uh, moved out to San Antonio. So he was in the US Air Force when he okay. met my aunt over in England. So uh, yeah, we, we followed them out there a couple of times and I suddenly stopped being the short fat kid. I started playing basketball and became a taller fat kid. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, yeah, I need to stop doing so much work on the computer. But, uh, but you're yeah, like no, seven so foot five or something, love... we just can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, where the, um, that's where the love of basketball came from, was basically seeing David Robinson and Tim Duncan play. So uh, if ever there's two guys to kind of inspire you, that's, that's those guys for me. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I had to know. I was curious. Um, okay, no, that's cool. So, so, yeah, I can answer this one, too. I... I'm a huge R fan, as Ben knows. Uh, I've been using it for eight years now. Uh, I started out in biotech, so it was when it was developed by a bunch of a uh, couple of statisticians, and there are so many free libraries for analyzing genetic genomic data. Uh, obviously, analyzing sports data to some people is even more exciting. Uh, I know I I definitely like it, but it's free. It's like uh, like uh, Max said, there are a bunch of free libraries and extensions that you can use. Not super difficult to learn, uh, similar to Python. So that's that's my go-to tool of choice. And for non-programmers, there's also uh, Google Fusion Tables if you want to check that out as just a free alternative. Mm -hmm. How about you, uh, Rob? Do you have anything to add to the, the cleaning and preparing data discussion? I, you know, R definitely is something that I use right now, especially for data collection. Um, one of the ongoing visualizations that I have is I work with a hockey analyst, uh, Rob Bullman, and I have two visualizations on his site that I work with him on, and one of them is a luck calculator that calculates the amount of luck uh, that a NHL team might be experiencing at any given time. And it involves... I don't know, about six to eight different data points that come from about four different sources. So something like R allows you to be able to scrape and pull all of that into one data source without having to go to each individual site on your own to scrape. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to put in a, a, you know, I tell anyone who ever starts with Tableau, 
that they need to go and download the Tableau uh, data, data reshaper tool for Excel. Um, mm -hmm. That is an immensely invaluable tool um, if you are an Excel user and working with data that you're getting ready for Tableau. So that data reshaper um, add-on for your Excel toolbar is, uh, is pretty sweet. Yeah, uh, that's a great point. We People love that tool when we show it to them. They, they usually, um, you know, we have to pick them up out, off the floor after they fall out of their chair. But it's just a simple little thing. It just pivots a data set that's a summary table into a, you know, more of a raw data format that Tableau loves to use. So just Google Tableau reshaper tool, and it's in an Excel add-in, and uh, you'll find it. So, um, Jewel, I know you work a lot with data and scraping and whatnot. Anything you want to talk about there with regard to getting a, a data set clean and ready to go? Yeah, so when you're working with, uh, especially I imagine, you know, not that I do it all the time, but with sports data, it's going to come at a lot of different levels. It's going to come at the team level, at the league level, at the individual player level. And if you don't know what you're looking for when you open up a data set, um, I really recommend always starting at the deepest level because when you're doing data discovery, really you're going to find so much more interesting things at that level. Um, so try to get you know each row to be a player instead of each row to be a team. Um, you'll learn a lot more about stuff that way. Yeah, and you can always aggregate up, right? But you can yeah. only go so far as the, the level of aggregation of your data source. Okay, cool. Well, we're, with regard to data sources, that's our next question here. Uh, let's move to that. Um, what are the best sources for sports? I'm sorry, what are the best free data sources for sports, or does it vary by sport? So I'm going to turn that open to you guys. What do you all think is what's the best place to go to, uh, to get data about sports for free? And this is by Paul Chapman, by the way, so thanks for submitting the question, Paul. Should I jump in and talk about basketball again? Yeah, go for it, Carl. <clears throat> I feel like I've been doing that a lot today. Um, so for me, it's a whole range of things. So Hoops Hype is a bit of a random one, but for they've got some really good salary stats. Um, so I use those and reference those guys quite a lot. Uh, HoopsReference.com, I think there's a hyphen in there, so Hoops or BasketballReference.com. Um, again, a really good source, loads of stats, but they're all held in quite individual pages, so that involves quite a bit of work putting it together. But I have to kind of commend the NBA for finally pulling their finger out on this one, and actually stats.mba.com is finally a site where you want to go and collect statistics. <laughs> and there's lots of the advanced stats are now there as well. They've not made it the easiest to get, but it certainly allows you to kind of put a bit of context together with, um, with what's going on. So... All in all, there's suddenly been a bit more of an explosion around what's available for free and what's out there. Um, and I'll petition Sports View yet again. Please open up your, even if it's just a small sample set, your XY data and your kind of positioning data. I think a lot of people could do a lot of good stuff with it if you just make it a little bit more available. Thank you. For hockey data, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's the traditional like NHL.com site, but if you're looking for the quote-unquote advanced stats or what they call it on Twitter, fancy stats, um, historically the best sites for those have been behind the net.ca, not .com, .ca, Canada, right? Um, behind the net.ca, and another one that involves a little bit of work, and you have to figure out how to do the scripting for it in the URL, but it's uh, timeonice.com. Uh, those were kind of the traditional, original, fancy stat sites for hockey, um, advanced hockey analysis. Um, as it's been gaining popularity, though, new sites have been popping up, so the latest, hottest site right now is extraskater.com, and he puts together a really fantastic package that really slices and dices the data in a variety of different ways. And he's relatively friendly for uh, to, to people scraping his site. Um, he just asks, you know, that you just don't. You give a little few seconds in between page scraping. But uh, but he knows people does that, um, do, do that sort of thing on the site. But that's, um, as far as hockey goes, that's uh, what I would recommend. Yeah, I can provide a couple of examples. Um, one is, of course, that advanced NFL stats play-by-play -play data that I mentioned where you could just have, there's hours upon hours of things you could look for in there. Um, 
The one that Ben mentioned was the Pitch RX by Carson Siebert. It's an R package that allows you to very simply scrape uh, pitch effects data by specific date ranges. So that's really nice because he also provides some cool graphing functions that even give you animated pitching charts in R just using some simple functions. And he walks through it really nicely on his uh, github.io page. And then just in general, uh, I saw scrape ESPN.com, uh, just read it right into R using the XML or HTML packages. Um, and then additionally, if I, I've done some Twitter stuff, I'll just use uh, two packages, TwitR by Jeff Gentry and then uh, StreamR by Pablo Barbera, I believe. And those uh, hit the Twitter streaming API and the REST API. And if you're doing fan sentiment or you want to track one of your team's <coughs> keywords, uh, that's, that's what I'll use for Twitter data. Yeah, yeah, on the football. So everybody, uh, no, go on, go on, Ryan. All right, sorry about that. I was just gonna piggyback off what Carl mentioned uh, on basketball reference. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yep. Yeah, we can see it. All right. Um, I was gonna mention baseballreference.com, and this is in that same family of basketballreference.com, and you can see on the top here all the sports that are available. Um, they have a different set for each sport. Sean Foreman, he's a baseball guy, so. The baseballreference.com is definitely the most in depth, but um, he, he now has a package for all the words. And the one other one I was going to mention uh, when I was referring to the disks I use to grab baseball data is um, seanlaman.com. I think it's spelled S E A N L A H M A N. Um, he, he does a database that he keeps up with every baseball stat you could ever want by player back to at least three decades, if not. I think he's got it probably way further than that, but that's a, a great resource. Yeah, on the football side, it seems like uh, uh, people are a little bit shy sharing everything for free. I guess the, the keyword here is free. So a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of good data there, but you have to pay for it, I'm afraid. Like you know, Opta being a good example of you know, collecting that level of detail. Uh, but for my needs, I'm probably collecting more data about football rather than, you know, football data in terms of player uh, stats. So, so places like Transfer Market, for example, is where I got quite a lot of the data for my viz. Uh, but uh, you have to uh, start scraping screens and, you know, going into a lot level detail to, to get it there. Um, other websites, football websites, 442, and a lot of local ones in Australia that track the A-League here yeah, as well. Uh, but no one sort of gives you a SQL interface, you know, to a nice database you could just suck in. It's all really just pages that you have to scrape mm -hmm. a lot of the time. And uh, let me just uh, show my screen over here. So we put together, actually this is um, Peter Kim, who's the newest member, or one of the newest members of the Tableau Public team over here in Seattle, is updating a, a visualization. <clears throat> can you all see that right now? Sports data sites. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is basically just uh, you can search by sport. So it just contains a number of links to uh, a bunch of different sports sites. So for example, if you want to find basketball stats, you can see a number of these different ones here, and then. On the right-hand side, they just click the arrow to visit. And if you have one, like for example, I think probably hockey, right? If we check that out, I don't know if yeah, we've got some of the ones that uh, that Rob mentioned. But you can always submit another one, and we will definitely update it. And we love that. So this little Google form up here, you can click on it and submit. So you can find this at the address at the top here. So this is on our blog. If you just search for Tableau uh, Public Sports Data Sites on Google, or if you go to tableaupublic.com and do a search on our site for sports data sites, you should um, see this, this blog post here, where to find sports data. Uh, so hopefully that answers that question there. Um, so I think the answer is, yeah, it varies by sport. It looks like most of these sites are sports specific. So there are a few general sites, but for the most part, you know, if you go to a specific website, it'll have data about one sport and only that sport. Um, so, Thanks for that question again, Paul. Let's move on. Uh, did we miss, unless we missed an awesome one that someone wanted to share but didn't get a chance to, we can move on to the next question here. Um, okay. Ben, but you gotta yeah. remind me to, uh, you gotta remind me to send you my marching band data site so you can put that in the sports. 
Exactly. Yeah, we gotta we gotta make sure we have marching band represented. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. All right. So Mike, thanks for helping us out with the questions here. He's he's keeping me queued up and ready to go on my next one. So yeah, next one. Has anyone viz the fan attendance data for a sport? So um, has anyone done that in the panel, or does anyone know of visualizations about uh, attendance data? Well, that's kind of how I started with my stuff. Um, so just to give you a little bit of history, uh, in Australia, the A-League is like the, uh, the American uh, Major League Soccer, right? Uh, which is relatively new, it's nine years in existence. So I wanted to track attendance um, of data. So if you go to my blog, there are good examples of actually two or three uh, visas that track attendance. In fact, I keep one that's live, gets updated every week. Uh, so you can track it against last year's attendance and, and see how we're going and, and so on. So it's by by team, by uh, you know round in the in 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 the season and and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So I I looked at this a while ago because I wanted to see what the home effect was. Um, it's not something I actually threw out there because I never got it to a place which and I've kind of seen the question come up as well about what's the story behind the data. <clears throat> And I could never get it to kind of quite really find the story. So that's something I'm still kind of working on in the background. But somebody who has done it, if I can try and share my screen, this is going to work. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, for this, I could do this a bit faster. Um, Peter Jokes, if you can kind of see what's coming on my screen now, with his different stadiums. So it wasn't necessarily the, the attendance for each game but just looking at the size of stadiums, which is just awesome in terms of digging into how many people could actually attend. Um, and obviously, I have to highlight Wembley. Uh, but yeah, no, it just kind of just shows you how crazy some of the stadiums are out across the world and um, how amazingly lucky some of the things, the massive sports stadiums are within the US. So yeah. Yeah, that's a great example. I actually had that teed up right here on my screen as well, ready to go. but. Uh, what really, I mean, this is a, a wonderful viz that Peter made, but uh, I learned a lot of things, right? For example, the largest stadium in the world is actually in North Korea, and that's nothing that I, I knew before, as well as if you look at all the top, like the top 15, a, a huge number of those are NCAA college football stadiums, so it gives you a sense of the size of that business, uh, something that's uh, sort of top of the headlines in the United States these days is the uh, some of the... NCAA football athletes seek to unionize, so um, a great visualization. Does anyone know of any other uh, attendance data? Yeah, there was one that we actually made visit the day not too long ago um, about college hockey conference, oh, um, yeah. and that was published by the USCHO. So I can share that with you guys right now. If I can figure out how to do that. There we go. Okay, never mind. I have to do a lot of things to my computer to let that happen, and it's not going to happen. Oh, wait, there it's going. Okay, so here it is. It was recently Visit the Day, um, and it's about college hockey conference tournament attendance. So you can see kind of the different um, conferences and which ones have the most attendance. There you go. Very cool. Great. Those are some examples. Um, all right. Uh, any other? Any other uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, ESPN does list, I think, just at the season level by team, average attendance and uh, percentage, and they rank them. But that I don't know that it gets I'm – not, I'm not sure of any sources where you can get uh, per game level granularity, but that would be awesome if anyone does know of it. Mm -hmm. I had one word of caution with the attendance data. Because I there was a concept I was going to tackle around the Super Bowl because I had heard it referred to as the bandwagon bowl uh, between Seattle and Denver. I apologize, Tableau, being in Seattle, but um, I wanted to see what the capacity was over a certain time frame to see if there was a correlation between the team winning and the stadium filling up. Mm. And it didn't quite tell the story that I wanted it to, uh, and I didn't want to pursue it. Um, mainly because it made my Chiefs look pretty bad, one of the best NFL fan bases in, in the league. But um, what I learned, too, was that 
and I've known this for a while actually, but attendance data is one of the most manipulated statistics. There's a huge difference between the number of tickets that are sold and the number of people that go through the turnstiles and attend the game. So if you are going to do something related to attendance, I suggest looking at something, some other metric with it, such as uh, TV ratings or <clears throat> TV penetration rating, TV ratings by the size of the market, something like that. There's a lot of um, season ticket holders that don't show up, a lot of packages that are bought but never actually used. Is that kind of what you're getting at there? Yeah, and they can, if it gets close to crunch time in the NFL and a game is going to be blacked out, they'll donate a huge chunk to charity or sell them at a discount just to keep it on TV. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, I just to follow up with Ryan, I took um, NHL provides the official attendance records for each game. Um, that's played during the season. And when I tried to visualize that, all I got was a flat line for a team. <laughs> Every single game was, you know, at the same level of attendance. So, Weird. yeah, there's a lot of, you know, obviously it's in the owner's best interest to say, yeah, we have a sellout every night. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, it's actually a good point. In, in general, uh, especially with publicly available data, right, you have to know what exactly you're looking at. And so in the case of attendance data, it's reported attendance figures, right? And it's not people who walked from the parking lot to the stadium and went inside the stadium, which probably doesn't exist. So um, it's, it's a good point for data in general, not just sports attendance data. Is know exactly what it is you're looking at and how that data was obtained um, and know what it doesn't show, right? Know it's not telling you. So good point. Thanks, Ryan. OK, awesome. So that's attendance data. Um, Let's talk about the next question here is about uh, what we call the beautiful game. So soccer seems to be getting popularity in the U.S. What kind of data would support or counter such an intuition? Uh, and this is by Nui Sukiyoria. So thank you, Nui, for the question. So um, I guess maybe so a handful of us here on the call are in the U.S., but not all. I guess I would just say... First of all, just anecdotally, do we think that that's true? Do we think as a, as a panel here that, yes, in fact, soccer is gaining popularity in the U.S.? Maybe just anecdotally. And then just where would you go to answer that question? As, you, as you're, you know, you're an expert data visualization blogger, what would be the, the place you go to, or how would you start your search to try to answer that question? Well, when you're in Seattle, you definitely feel like it's gaining popularity. It's probably our most popular team here in Seattle is really the Sounders, well, until the Seahawks actually started winning things. But I remember I, you know, I grew up in Seattle and I left for college in Arizona, and when I came back, all of a sudden everyone was obsessed with the Sounders, like, overnight, and I had no idea what was going on. Um, and I know that they have, but I know that they have one of the, um, the highest attendance records in the MLS, so that's probably... Not really about the whole nation, but I know that at least it's growing pretty much very quickly here. In general, and this seems to be a theme with a lot of my analyses, but I, I follow the money. So it, as it relates to the gaining popularity of soccer in the U.S., I would look at how many soccer-specific stadiums are being built because that requires a huge investment from these owners. They're not going <clears> to <throat> invest in it if nobody's going to show up. How much are we paying our players? How much is the ticket price? Um, all those things I think would help determine if it's truly growing, and I, I have seen that. I know that it is trending up. Yeah, and just to, to uh, follow up on that, um, there's a great Tableau uh, MLS blogger anyway, so if you want to know about professional soccer in the United States, um, his name is Steve Fenn, and his website is stathunting.com. And by the way, I just want to make sure everybody knows that this will be recorded, so um, if you have a question or you couldn't quite hear an answer, you can go back and play it. And also, when we publish the link to the recorded version, we'll, add up, we'll include all the links. So we mentioned a whole bunch of URLs here over the course of the past 45 minutes or so. But um, yeah, we'll definitely uh, have, a link, have links there available. But... Um, let me share my screen over here, and I'll show you Steve Fenn's website. So again, it's stathunting.com, and can you all see that? Mm -hmm. So this was his submission to the Sports Biz Contest, so it's showing the goal of the year nominees for MLS, so some great soccer data um, that Steve produces over here. And I think he also has a number that show um, the financial side of the sport. So. 
I recommend you check that out as he covers things like salary and player salary and so forth. So some great stuff there by Steve. I, I think just I mean just to weigh in and then we'll move on. But I definitely having grown up playing soccer uh, in Southern California, I would say it's true. You know we noticed obviously this huge surge in 1994 when the country hosted the World Cup, and then subsequently or with, coinciding with that World Cup, we launched a professional league here, the MLS. And so. I definitely think that it's something that has grown much, much more since the 80s or 90s when there really wasn't that much of, of awareness at all. Um, so, and I know that the street, the league struggled early on, and it seems like it's come through a lot of those early struggles. But uh, as far as is it, it's a crowded, as they say, right? It's a crowded sports market. So there's already a lot of mindshare and dollars and um, and you know fan uh, base support for for teams of other sports. So I don't think it's quite broken through. You know, certainly not to the level of the other big three: football, basketball, and uh, baseball. But it's on the radar now, and I think it's it's got a base to grow, um, which is cool. I think the the U.S. men's national team has a huge kind of loyal fan base, but definitely not as big as some of the other uh, sports. But it's nice to see it there and growing and viable, um, being that it is you know by far the most popular sport worldwide. Um, it's still got a lot of ways to go here. Uh, in the U.S. to being as popular, um, nearly nearly as close to as popular anyway as the rest of the world. Um, Come on, Ben. Sorry, my one. Go on, Carl. Um, I, I, I was just going to say that you could also look <coughs> at players going to the top leagues in the world. So I know it's something I definitely do for European basketball is actually look at which countries are providing a huge number of players. Obviously, Spurs have a massive international contingent. Um, so seeing what that where they've come from, whether it's France and or wherever it actually may be, but um, you could also look at the number of U.S. players that have come into the Premiership over certainly the last few years, mostly into Tottenham as well. But um, there's kind of you could see that growth, and actually as the professionalism creates, then you'll see that kind of all move together and create more players in the top leagues. All right, awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, just, go ahead, just, go ahead, just, yeah, sorry, I was gonna... Not was in the gonna... US, so, so I don't kind of understand the landscape that too well, but I ask exactly the same questions down in Australia, which is sort of similar uh, in some way because uh, there are other sports that are more popular than, than soccer, football. So I started tracking attendance as, as being one to see how it grows from year to year. Um, the other area I started looking at is is how many articles are being published about the sport in, in sort of mainstream newspapers and start comparing that and seeing you know whether there is a growth over time. Now what you've got to collect quite a bit of data there. Um, so that was one other area and as what Carl also mentioned is players coming from outside of the country uh, like you know David Beckham went to the US and so on and what impact those players would have and whether it's a lasting impact. Um, so, for example, in Australia, Del Piero, one of the Italian players, came came down here, and, and you could see a major spike in attendance, and not just for the home team, but all the other wherever he went in on away games, the attendance went up. So you can start measuring all that, and, and I'm getting quite a good feel for where, where things are going, and it's definitely going up every season. So. Yeah, and I was just going to add, uh, interestingly enough, I got received an article the other day from someone about um, the interest in different sports among the 12 to 17 age group, so what is attracting generations and how are we going to maintain uh, sports in the markets if uh, generations aren't as interested in them for some reason. And uh, I do have the chart. I'll just share real quick. Um, So it's it looks like the ma major league soccer is a little bit on the mm. rise, at least with that age group. So I just thought that was interesting, and I'm not sure if anyone can see my screen yet, but yeah, oh yeah, we can see it. Yeah. yeah. So you can see uh, some of this one's on the, the. I think it's just NCAA, but you see the NBA is is on an uptick again. MLB is actually decreasing a bit. But I thought that was interesting and a little bit relevant, so I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sportsbusinessdaily.com. Yeah. Got it. Okay, cool. Awesome. Great question um, about soccer and the growth of soccer. Um, next question here. we got only a few minutes left. So 
Um, next question being, what kind? I know he saw that one too, right? Yeah. So um, the next question is, does Ben have a nice new haircut? Actually, it was not submitted as a question, but rather as a statement. So Andy, I tip my hat to you. Thank you. Um, yes, I did get a nice new haircut. Uh, next question here: What kind of data visualization stories do you find get the best responses online? So this is with regard to things that you're sharing. What have been what have been the stories that you've presented that you find get the most? Um, I guess the best response, which I think there's probably a few ways of measuring the best response, but I'll leave that open to you all to define as well. I can jump in. I've really learned a lot about this recently, and I, I think the the main key is to keep it very simple. Um, I find that if I try to talk too much and and guide the story too much it, and just overwhelm it, try to put everything on one palette, it just is too much to digest and people don't share it. And then the one other thing I've learned that's really helped some of my, my recent visualizations is the ones that can elicit an emotional response. So I did this one that's comparing your salary, anybody can type in their salary, compare it to an MLB player's salary. And what I found is a lot of people are sharing it and they're using words like, this is depressing. Like, I can't believe this. You know, it's it's actually eliciting a response in them and it's making them want to share it. So that, those are the ones that have been successful for me. I, I found... Sorry, go, Robert. No, you're right in. Okay, I found sort of follow-on from Ryan's comments is uh, if you can... Uh, take that vision, make it your own, almost, right? So the football transfer one that I put together, uh, I was very surprised how uh, people took it on, adjusted it for their own country, and started telling stories about uh, football transfers in their own country. In fact, they started comparing, this is how it used to be in 1960s in Japan, this is how it is now in 2011. Uh, and, and then there were just endless number of stories now in, in, in that one simple viz. Uh, so I, I, I thought just giving people access to making it their own and, and making telling a personal story almost. I've, I've found to, um, you know, in hockey right now, the issue is it's the, the stats or the advanced stats um, are still way behind a lot of other sports. And as a result, we still have a lot of folks that are the quote unquote watch the game, watch the game people um, versus the uh, fancy stats guys, you know, the, the, the data nerds, the data geeks or whatever. Um, and so I try to take advantage of that. And I listen either on Twitter or through comments on the blog about what the watch the guy, you know, watch the game people are saying. And uh, and try to, you know, look up their assertions and try to either affirm or de you know deny their assertions uh, using data and using data visualizations. And I found, you know, when you pick a player that everyone's beaten up on and you write up something about them, um, obviously that's going to get a lot of attention because everyone's already talking about that player. So hmm. just keeping a pulse to me anyway, keeping a pulse on what the fans are talking about at any given time, either through Twitter or comments and the, on the site. Yeah, I think that really transcends uh, sports viz. It, that's really all viz is if you're making things to share online, you should really try to know your audience so that not only you know what level of detail to put things at and how data literate they are, but also just you know, who's going to enjoy it the most. I made another dashboard about something mildly competitive, which is Pokemon. And when I shared it, I shared it with the Pokemon Reddit on Reddit. And that's where it went popular. No one gave a crap about it on my own blog because I don't have that many readers that are super into Pokemon. But you share it on something like that, and they like it. So knowing your audience, what they actually want to see, and sharing it with the relevant people, I think that's how you get a really good response. Just to make Joel feel better, I've shared the Pokemon Viz numerous times in the investment bank, and it's a great reaction to seeing investment bank. <laughs> you know, the Pokemon Viz going, okay, now I understand how you have uh, dynamic filters and things. That makes sense. <laughs> so that's really cool. I, I think for me on this subject, I'd say I completely agree with what everyone's mentioned, but I'd also say do stuff that you, you're interested in yourselves. It's your time. Um, don't necessarily make things for other people. Make things for yourselves. So just a quick share of my screen again. Um, and it, that's where my 
my shot chart came on my latest viz was actually just trying to understand where does the ball mm. movement happen. So as much as I love Kurt Goldsbury and his visualizations and the cartoon style, it's absolutely amazing. And let's see what Ryan and I can do to actually try and create something like that. But actually just understanding where that pass has gone for that successful shot, that was purely just coming out of my own head for I just need to work this out of how to actually do this one way or the other. Um, so it's a tableau challenge or a visualization challenge as well as just trying to question what's going on in the sport itself. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's got to be something you're interested in. And, you know, to pick up on Rob's point, maybe your interest level is because someone's making a claim about something. I would get a lot of my... Uh, my interest or my inspiration, rather, uh, from just listening to sports radio, you know, driving home on the LA freeways. And as a fan, I'm just interested in what's going on, and someone would make some claim. And so, you know, is there a data story behind that that either refutes it or confirms it? So, um, but it's got to be something you're passionate about. And usually that's what I think people uh, end up getting interested in as well or connecting uh, because of your passion. Well, uh, we are at the top of the hour, so I think we're going to wrap it up here. There are so many other questions um, that we didn't get to, uh, but thank you all for, for uh, participating, for listening, um, and especially thank you to the panelists for taking time out of your day to, um, to join us, not just to join us, but also um, to write the guest blog post that you wrote. Um, just for the rest of the, the folks here um, that are joining in, uh, and listening. So if you want to know more from these specific panelists, you can go to our blog. So our blog is just at Tableau. Uh, if you just type in tableaupublic.com into your browser URL, and let me share this real quickly over here with everyone. I'll show you that, uh, that screen of our blog, and you'll see that they each have a blog post for Sports Viz Month, which was this past month in March. Um, and so, yeah, so this is Carl's here on basketball analytics, and here's Tanya's on social sentiment and uh, during a playoff game, and then we have Ryan's here talking about baseball stats, and uh, you can keep going down here to see some more. Here's a link to the sports data sites. Uh, Lee, who couldn't join us, uh, did a, a visualization on just kind of more topical or, or theoretical about soccer and data. Um, here's Jules about the drum corps, and yeah, so we had just a lot of blogs. Thank you all for the call and joining as well as all the work that you did. We're huge fans. We love uh, following your blogs and just look for um, everything that you do and come out um, because it's it's really cool stuff. And, you know, sports, again, is something that is interesting to to a large swath of the uh, of the Western world and, and beyond, really. So sports is a great topic and, and uh, a data-rich topic more and more so here as time goes on. So with that, uh, again, this is just about exactly in an hour. So thank you all again. I wish you um, all the best of luck here going forward, and let's keep in touch. And um, yeah, with that, we'll we'll wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Nice meeting you guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See ya. <laughs>